Sunday Night Fight fans. My name is Yoink, and welcome to Sunday Night Fight Season 4. If you're just joining us, we are now in Game 2 of a Best of 3 series between Dev M and Freestyler to determine who will go to the finals in the fourth qualifying tourney for our big Sunday Night Fights Season 4 tournament. I'm joined by my special co-host, Call Me Sarge, who just finished shoutcasting a game with my other co-host, Ami Politsefunk. And it was a quick knockout by the Kid Wonder, Dev M. As Ami had been discussing in the first game, his powerful American force can knock out an opponent in just about 10 or 12 minutes. Well, he did it in about 7 in this first game, which shows that Dev M has been practicing. He is a monster sprinter when it comes to Company of Heroes games. He can knock opponents out quick, so fast that they can't even get to the next stage of their army development, and we saw it here, and Freestyler is going to have to come back now with his own American team and try to do the same thing. Now, call me Sarge, what do you think Freestyler can do to go up against DevM's Wehrmark on this Bois de map in coming up here in Game 2? To be honest, Yoink, I don't have a clue. I just think DevM is on fire tonight. I think tonight's the night. He's been here before so many times. But that game, it was flawless almost. I can't think of a single mistake he made. Everything went right. I think Freestyle has got a real uphill climb here. Well, we've seen hyper-aggression from Dev M, especially in this first game, in the form of amazing rifleman tactics. Like, he decided not to build a second engineer and instead spend his manpower on a second rifle squad, so he overwhelmed Freestyler's position in the center with more rifle squads than I think that Freestyle was expecting. As a result, it was an enormous knockout blow right in the first four or five minutes of the game that Freestyler simply could not come back from. Now, I don't know if we're going to see the exact same kind of combat from the Wehrmark side when Dev M now plays the Germans, but if it is, the one thing that I think we can expect is continued aggression, because after seeing Dev M play in all four now of our qualifying tournaments, it's clear that he's a sprinter in Company of Heroes. He sprints to the finish line, he's not exactly a comeback artist, he doesn't plan on being a comeback artist, he doesn't want to have to come back from anything. He wants to knock his opponent out in the first 10 or 15 minutes and get the game done. So let's see if Freestyler can let this drag on just a little bit, he may able to be able to beat Dev M endurance, so to speak, and turn the game around in his favor. So I'm kind of excited to see how this shapes up. So if I could get our cameraman and director NTD, who by the way is doing an amazing job all season bringing us these games from a technical aspect, if I could get him to please show us the game field, we can probably get started here at, at the five second mark. Does that sound good, Call Me Sarge? Ready when you are, mate. Okay, I can see that he uh, looks like NTD is all set up. So let's get started at the countdown in five. Four, three, two, one, start. And the clock is ticking at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now I'm excited to follow a Dev M in the south as he plays for the Wehrmacht team. And call me Sarge, you're going to follow Freestyler in the north with the Americans. And it looks like they're chatting a little bit already. They shouldn't cast G anyway. People would be disappointed. Not sure what he means by that. Just taking a quick read there. But already I can tell Dev M is starting with a little... Ah, game one. That's what it was. Game one. Understood. Um... It looks like Dev M is going with a little bit more of a traditional Wehrmark build. He's got two uh, two Pioneers and a Volksgrenadier start. So not as aggressive as he was in Game 1, but I still think that aggression is going to show here in just a few minutes. Yeah, I think he would need to temper that. He could he could risk being over-aggressive with the Wehrmacht who aren't necessarily best suited for that kind of play and blow it. I think uh, he's going to take it slow. I mean, Dev, Hem Dev M is really the classic boxing headhunter. He's looking for that knockout blow. It'll be interesting to see how he chooses to formulate that knockout blow uh, with the Vermax. Well, you know, this map, we was, as you guys were discussing a little bit earlier, it does allow for amazingly open flanks. Americans can pretty much come at any direction here in this map, and I think that that is what Freestyler is going to have to try and do uh, early on. He's going to have to try and replicate that knockout that Dev M did early uh, on in Game 1, uh, but I don't know. Is Freestyle as aggressive as his opponent? Uh, he's, he's more of a technical player. We've seen him in Sunday Night Fights before. Uh, he's one of our favorites. And certainly a giant of, of of the game. So we'll have to see what kind of strategy he's going to progress here. It looks like he's moving riflemen and engineers down the left side of the field. And it looks like these two men are going to meet here in the center in just a few seconds. 
Yeah, this centre is, as Amy was saying, absolutely critical. I'd love if the statistics monkeys on Sunday Night's Fights could come up with a number of statistics of how many snipers have died in that centre over the course of the tournament. It seems like I've seen hundreds die there. Well, you know, it's funny. Uncle Sam wrote into the map a, a pre-placed scorch mark right in the center of the map. It's almost as if he knew that this would be the focal point of all of the combat. And here we see now a Jeep moving in to engage these Vulture Grenadiers. Here's Freestyle being aggressive just like DevM was in Game 1. But here comes that Shrimp Wagon. Now we have a Tier 1 vehicle combat. Volks and Rifleman, uh, Jeep and Schwimmwagon all engaging the balance of power now slightly in the Germans' favor as they have Pioneers coming up. That Schwimmwagon looking like it's about to go down. That Jeep is completely healthy. Wow. The Schwimmwagon has to get out of there. Dev M is going to try and escape. No, he's going to try and repair under fire. Can he actually continue to repair under fire? No, down goes the Schwimmwagon. And it looks like uh, the Rifleman, though, they have done their job taking the Schwimmwagon now, but they are deeply, deeply wounded. This is going to be all about Jeep pushing right now. Can the Jeep push these Volksgrenadiers oh, out no, before the Rifleman have to retreat? And no, the Riflemen are retreating. So, oh, uh, an board, enormous engagement. That, that was a close call. That was a close call. Both men being super aggressive at two, basically, hammer sma smashes right in the middle of the map. And it looks like now it's a stalemate between these understrength Volks Grenadiers and the Riflemen as they move, uh, I mean, and as the Jeep as it moves back. Finally, some Riflemen here to come up and assist that Jeep. I'm really impressed with the longevity and staying power of this Jeep so far. It's been able to stay, obviously, much longer than its brethren. This trim wagon went down very early. And again, like you said, call me Sarge, exact same placement of troops for the center action right now here on Bois de yeah, it's really interesting. I think there was a, a bit of targeting priority going on in that first engagement. I think um, DevM was really focusing on whittling the rifles down, where Freestyle was focusing on taking that Schwimm out rather than trying to attack the Volks. Yeah, and you know what? It ended up doing the right thing for him because that Schwimm wagon, you know, uh, it, it, was, uh, it went down pretty quick. And this Jeep now all the way on the left-hand side being repaired right by the victory point. So that Jeep is going to be back to fight another day. Now, uh, much less calm engagements going on here. One-on-one -on -one engagements here, for instance, on the right-hand side of NTD will show these Volks and these engineers. These uh, engineers are now soft-pedaling their way back into American territory. Volks chasing them. Really nobody doing any damage to anybody else at this point. Yeah, it's all gone quiet for a couple of seconds, but there's a large American force proceeding up the road. There's three rifle squads in the field. And uh, the next engagement, I think, is going to be quite a big one. Yeah, see, Freestyle here consolidating his forces on the right. Looks like he's going to want to make a push right down the right-hand side, but in the center, this Jeep is going full frontal face forward into the German army as it moves up the field here. Uh, this Jeep has managed to kill only two uh, infantry units so far, but it certainly has d done a lot in order to swing the battle towards uh, the American side, at least, you know, keep, keep Wehrmacht forces busy. Yeah, and I think he deserves a, a little pep of vet there. He's putting some really good work. Hopefully he gets a couple more kills and uh, we can see the lovely vetted Jeep. Yeah, I did notice that uh, the Jeep did get the credit for the vehicle kill, so the Jeep was the final shot on that swim wagon. And now here we're seeing a little bit more engagement here in the center. Rifleman going up against, oh, not a good position to be in right now. These rifles wow. are going to go down fast. Freestyler's got to take them out of combat ASAP. All right, as we can see here, the German team making their stand in the center. Americans still floating around the outside on the right. Schwimmwagen, great little chasing unit, a little bit more expensive than the bike, but you pay for the ability to back up. So it's just basically like the American version, of, or the German version of the Jeep. And these rafts are about to, to go. Decided to rebuild the Schwimm and, and prolong his T1. Well, you know what? That's uh, We've discussed that before on Sunday Night Fights. Great players visualize what they want their army to be, and then they bring it into reality. So clearly, DevM has a vision of his army included with the Schwimmwagen, and a uh, Schwimmwagen, excuse me. And so if it goes down, he's going to continue to rebuild it until he's satisfied he wants to leave Tier 1. So the other thing that we're seeing here also, a vision for an army, includes bars for the American team. Here we are at six minutes in, and Freestyle has decided to spend his first fuel on bars, which is going to make it a very infantry-heavy army. Here we go. The MG42, for some reason, has packed up and is now retreating. These American riflemen are in a good position to try and take it down, but you know what? Now it looks like, oh my gosh, a grenade has been tossed, and nice. boom! Down goes the MG42! Everything is destroyed. The, the, the gun itself, all of the men, dead. Huge win for Freestyler at this point. Uh, although I just saw, I think the Jeep just went down to a mine just north of the victory point. So, gave a unit and took a unit. 
That was a good little engagement. Yeah, and that, um, that grenade upgrade worth the fuel for that single nade alone. Well, well, you know, we've also talked on Sunday Night Fights about shock value of upgrades and units. My favorite shock value... Oh my gosh! A shot, talk about shock value! A rifleman just went down to a German mine! Oh my god, did they retreat? Wait a minute. Were they, they able to retreat? I think they were. Left. Yeah, one man's wow, left. Wow, that was close. And, uh, yeah, very, very lucky there for freestyle lead. He was in task squad. It's quite feasible. Uh, because I was following the German team, I didn't see the icon over the rifle's he head as it was retreating, and I thought perhaps the entire squad had gone down. Anyway, we were just speaking about shock value of units and upgrades. The M8, of course, is the classic American shock value unit. Once it hits the field, you have about three or four minutes of pure dominance that you should use a a as much as you can. The other shock value upgrade that I think is grenades. The first time you use that grenade, you can scare the heck out of your opponent. If they're not watching, you can decimate or even eliminate entire units like the MG42 we just saw. So, uh, Freestyler used it exactly correctly. And I think I'm um, the center now. enjoying. Oh, another nade. In effect. The freestyler seems to be enjoying. Um, pr uh, the lion's share of the combat seems to be going his way. He hasn't taken any major losses yet. No, I mean, short of losing a couple of tier one, like the, the Jeep, he lost the Jeep, but again, you know, it was balanced by the fact that, that the German side, uh, you know, uh, Dev M also lost a tier, tier one vehicle. So, uh, as I was just commenting, you saw in that last engagement. Um, Freestyler threw a grenade, but DevM was ready, so the shock value was gone. So it's going to be a lot harder to maximize that fuel usage of, of you know, of buying the grenade. It, it's not really going to pay off as much as, as, as it did Sticky the first on time. The swim. And it looks like Stickies. So we have 100% rifle upgrades now from the American team, which means his rifles are going to vet up very quickly. Uh, he's also building a supply yard in his base, so if he gets... Uh, the, t the first upgrade of the supply yard, he's going to have super fast vet on his rifles, and it looks like Freestyler has decided to stake his army as being very infantry heavy. Has he chosen a doctor well, yet? Uh, uh, no, he has. <clears throat> well, Dev M has made an early investment in the campcraft center and already has vet one infantry. Well, this is the kind of combat that I like. I like seeing veterancy games and infantry games here on Sunday Night Fights. Uh, I think that the infantry combat in Company of Heroes is what, why it shines as a real-time strategy game. So we're going to be seeing a lot of that, I think, in this little engagement. And here we have Volks backed up by a sniper in the center. I did see that sniper shot, right? And now rifles charging in. Freestyle looking very aggressive. He's got to know that there's a lot of German forces right here. And yet he's charging these rifles straight through to try and hunt that sniper. They're on sniper hunting Dude, duty. And a, a grenade gets thrown. Retreats from both directions. Well done. And it looks like the and German army a, is sort of falling back. And we have a doctrine chosen for Freestyler. Infantry with right-hand side the artillery Americans selected. Capturing a sector. Okay, that makes sense for this very infantry-heavy build army that he's putting together onto the field. Nothing from Dev M yet. He's got three command points still in the bank. And looking down, I see that he has uh, decided to go with a Kriegs Barracks in his base. So he's going to start pumping out Tier 2 units. Perhaps, I don't think he would expect an M8. I'm not sure why a Kriegs Barracks is the best option for him now. He's seen Stickies. He's seen... Oh, wow. Bar He's yeah, seen grenades. Why not build a puma? I just saw point, right? Uh, top right hand side, uh, Freestyle just disarmed a grenade with a mine. A mine with a grenade, even. Oh, he tossed a grenade onto a mine. Wow. Very cool. How uh, did right hand side fuel point. I have no idea how, how did he even know it was there. He must have guessed, right? I don't see minesweepers unless he saw it being laid He's earlier and just remembered. He saw. He saw Pyos evacuating from the area as he came in, so I think it was an educated guess. Wow, that's brilliant. That's really brilliant. And Sniper is retreating under bar fire here on the right-hand side. Probably will be able to get away in time. First unit out of the Kriegs Barracks for Dev M will be a Grenadier Squad. So it looks like he wants to combat Barred Riflemen with perhaps Vet 2 Grenadiers, I'm guessing? Would that work? Oh, wow. We have Tank Depot going up in three style of Okay, Vet 2 Grenadiers would definitely not go well against Sherman. So I think perhaps Dev M is guessing wrong on where Freestyler is going to be putting the rest of his... Well, grenade in the center. Pops off, does no damage to the Volks Grenadiers as they retreat. There's, uh, there's got to be a lot of munitions being spent by the American team at this point, right? Um, he's got 100 in the bank. The Yankees are grabbing our territory. 
for some reason, the German team here, DevM has spent most of his muni munitions, it must be on mines, because he only has 36 in the bank right now. I'm not really seeing where it's all coming from. It must be flamers and, and mines. So now more and combat here in the center. Look at... Look at the aggression, though. I'm really impressed with the aggression that Freestyler has shown. He's sending rifle squads straight down into the center area of that map and just lobbing grenades at German infantry left and right. And really, the only thing that's been able to stop this American advance is continued reinforcement of, of infantry and that sniper there that keeps showing up, taking out rifle, rifle squads as they come down. Yeah, I was going to say, that sniper has been a really effective unit for DevM. 11 kills is really starting to get a nice little manpower bleed going on to the Allied Force. The victory points remain the same. Uh, just about the same. Four, 414 to 453 at this point. Middle VP getting whited out. Uh, this, uh, as we had discussed all game, this, this center part of the map is seeing the most amount of combat. Most of the green cover has been destroyed there already on the German side uh, due to tremendous amount of combat. Explosions, grenades, etc. Ooh, packs out. Okay, well that is going to go well against what is the inevitable Sherman, I'm sure. Has it started building in the American base yet? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, it needs about 10 more fuel. Okay, so we're going to be seeing that Sherman, I'm guessing, here in about two or three more minutes. Rifle squads coming southbound through the road. Now, riflemen perform better if they have bars and they're stationary, the if I can mm. recall correctly. So, uh, running with your bars gives you an accuracy penalty. So a lot of this movement southbound on the road in open cover is what I think is causing Freestyler to lose a lot of his manpower. Uh, it's still done the effective work of eliminating German positions there, but I'm wondering if it wouldn't be better suited as the game drags on, as veterancy appears on German forces, for him to stay stationary with those bars to get a little bit more accuracy against these grenadiers that are ultimately going to be running around. Oh, I think you're entirely right. Um, the Sherman is uh, probably about halfway done now. Okay, so American Heavy Cavalry is probably going to come straight down that main road, I'm guessing. It seems the way to be the way Freestyler wants to build his, his attack plan. So one Shrek and one pack is probably enough to stop that Sherman. I don't know if it's going to be enough to eliminate it if Freestyler plays it right. All he's got to do is back it up and he can keep it alive. Now we're seeing combat here on the right-hand side. See, long-range bar fire in green cover is going to do very, very well for, for Freestyler at this point. I think he recognizes that. Even though these Volks Grenadiers also do well at long range, I'm pretty sure bars are going to do better. So we'll see how this shapes up. There is a balance of power, though. There are a lot more Volks Grenadiers firing behind those trees than there are rifles. Interesting. Freestyler has not upgraded uh, the machine gun on his Sherman. He's got 160 minis in the bank. I think that's an off-map shoot as soon as the pack reveals itself. Yeah, that would probably be a good combination. And uh, away go all the riflemen. A full American retreat from the field, probably in preparation for what is going to be a push a little bit later. Here come these Shreks up to engage the Sherman. Good first shot on that uh, on that Sherman's frontal armor. Good penetration. And now, as we uh, as we know, we just got to keep kiting that big piece of American armor straight back out of range of these Grenadiers. Another shot goes wide, just swings a little bit to the left and damages the treads. And now we're going point blank range. These Grenadiers have got to retreat, although the pack is going to be backing them up. Now the pack is in range. I think that the, now, the, now the Sherman cannot withstand this. It has to retreat as it is, and now an understrength engineer squad is going to take a long time to repair that Sherman. I hear the Arty going in. Yeah, the Arty is going down on the right hand side. side. Yeah. Volks Grenadiers running right through it. And they got lucky, able to retreat through American artillery. One shot. The, uh, the Sherman was very effective sniping the um, Panzerstreck squad there. Three infantry kills on in his first engagement. If he keeps that up, it should go well. Yeah, you know, Vet 2 inf uh, I'm sorry, Vet 2 on Grenadiers does not protect against heavy barreled weapons. Uh, it's only against small arms fire. So while Vet 2 Grenadiers, should he choose to upgrade them, will help him fight American bar rifles, it's not going to help fight Sherman. Really the only way to fight a Sherman, I think, at this point is with German armor or an abundance of packs. So we'll see if whatever direction DevM decides to go with this. Well, it looks like he's putting up a Sturm Armory in his base, so he may be going with Stugs, which have great frontal armor, 
versus that Sherman's main gun while it's unupgraded. It's interesting what you were saying earlier about shock factor. The Sherman wasn't able to generate anything like the shock factor of the grenade. It feels like Dead End was quite prepared for it. Okay, we've seen a doctrine choice now from Dev M. Propaganda War and Terror has been chosen. Propaganda War was just used on the right side of that victory point, forcing American rifles back to their base. This allowed the German army now to consolidate everything that it has right in the center, and this Sherman now is only backed up by a very small infantry squad. Although, oh my goodness, am I seeing on-map artillery? Boom! Perfect bullseye on that Pack 38 from that Howie that just snuck up in Freestyler's base. Now the Sherman is the monster on the field. There is no pack and only a Shrek squad that I can't even find right now. It's way over to the right in order to st that, that could stop the Sherman. And here it comes southbound right through the field. Main road. Yeah, he needs to make point the point window where the pack is down. And really uh, try and clean up as much as he could. If you look at the map, devon has been steadily pushing northwards. He's got pretty good map control right now. Yes, he does. Now the pack has been remanned, but the Sherman is going to come right around, back behind it. He can circle strafe this, but we got a we got a Panzerfaust on the front armor of the Sherman, and these Shreks are going to come up behind it. Now the Sherman is in a bad spot. It needs to get moving right now. Oh my gosh! One good shot on that pack takes it down. The vehicle itself is destroyed. All of the men arming it are destroyed. These rifles are coming to the rescue of American heavy cavalry, but it backs right up into a mine. Destroyed. Now this is a disabled Sherman, destroyed engine, a disabled Sherman deep in German territory. It needs rescue ASAP. Where are the engineers? Where is the Army Corps oh, of Engineers stuck. to repair this? And a stun Stug's now coming up. Here we have a German assault gun is going to be able to take out this piece of American armor that is stuck behind enemy lines, and down it goes. And this sniper's coming up right behind it to take a look. And wow, look at the slow motion Sherman going down. So now the dominant force on the field is this German assault gun. This Stug facing down a whole bunch of rifles. We know they're armed with stickies, so it's not like he can go charging right into that. But this Stug can hold the line briefly while German forces come up and try to stop these rampaging rifles as they try and push down south in the German territory. Yeah, that last engagement, um, I think Freestyle is not going to be totally happy with the way that went. Uh, the artillery he's got is going to be able to keep him in, uh, in good shape for a little while. It's probably pushing back the Grenz there. But they're only going back a couple of hundred yards to the base. They'll be right back again in about a minute's time. You know what? When I played Company of Heroes early on, a long time ago, when I saw how he's uh, dropping artillery on me, me and my 2v2 partner would do what we called package delivery. It's an old trick where you load up two grenadiers and do a suicide uh, sort of a mission in a half track, and you just run it right into your opponent's base, pop, you know, uh, what is it, uh, inspired assault, and just try and take out that howitzer as soon as possible, and as soon as it's down, uh, retreat out of it. It's not something, it's, it's pretty not risky. Bad, cool. <laughs> it's pretty risky. Also you can lose a half track and two Shrek Grenadier squads, though. Also known as the clown car. Right, it's exactly right, the clown car. Now I have off map artillery dropping right on the Volks Grenadiers that are capping that VP point. I don't think they see it. Oh, very lucky. The first shot goes wide, and these Volks Grenadiers escape completely with their lives. Second shot now, we take the sniper. 20 Down goes a rifle squad. Now. Down goes a rifle squad just on the right-hand side. An enormous battalion of German infantry took out that rifle squad. And here is an M8 going right face first into German infantry. There's probably a lot of Panzerfaust power and a Grenadier squad that Shrek that could take that thing out. It needs to back up right now. Here is the American infantry backing it up, but they get propaganda ward. So this M18 has got to retreat all the way back. It has no support whatsoever. Where is Freestyler standing with his number of rifle squads. I feel like there's less of them now. Two rifle They're squads, you're exactly territory. right. He has lost two in total. You know, for someone that has bet so much on riflemen as being a part of his army, he really was careless in losing so many. If you've got all of these upgrades for your rifles, they're, they become, you know, an incredibly important part of, of your army. And losing them, going all the way down to two, is, I think, the reason why suddenly map control is now falling solidly in favor of the Wehrmacht at this point. And the M18 Hellcat is an odd choice to me. It's neither really one thing or the other. And with the Shrek support and the Stugs, uh, the M18 is going to be hard pressed to make a real impact on the Axis armor. 
Yeah, this is true. I agree with you. I think maybe saving up and waiting for Sherman might have been better, being that he has such powerful riflemen. Simply using the riflemen as the pushing force with that Sherman in the background as a force multiplier would probably be a lot better way of taking back territory from Dev M at this point. Here we've got rifles that are capping under fire. It's just a little bit of a desperate move here against this Puma here on the right-hand side. And now the M18 is coming southbound to try and engage that Puma. This is the proper way to use the M18, backed up with your rifles. But that's what I'm saying. It's like three rifle, three rifle squads and an M18 together with one Puma. And here we go, Prop War again. This Prop War is, is definitely the MVP power of this game. Every time Deb M has used it, he has managed to drive off a piece of American armor at the same time. And look at this, Puma blocking the M18. And now it's going to take front shots Faust. from this Stug Faust, Faust, and a Faust. Faust. Big trouble, big trouble. M18 just escaping with its life. Now just out of range. Wow, great job. Deb M almost closed the noose right around the neck of that M18, and here comes its brother to try and drive off this Puma, and down it goes! M18 number one goes down to a well-placed Stug shot, and here comes uh, uh, this M18, now the Stug might go down, but it looks like this rifle squad is trapped behind the Stug! Oh man, the Stug goes down to a shot from, well, the M18, I guess. Yeah, M18 took credit for the kill, but again, look at him, he stands with like a quarter health already, that's just like a couple of Shrek squad shots. Shrek, Shrek, Shrek. Okay, so that ah, there's the no. In. Ah, I hear you. I hear you, my friend. I've been sipping mine very slowly. <laughs> Gotta love the Oban, though. So here we go. Americans now trying desperately to take some territory back and a VP. VPs are now starting to become a little bit of a pathway to victory for Dev M if he can hold on to them. And I think the freestyler recognizes it. Here's this Stug now floating around in the wrong direction, certainly within sticky range. You gotta get out of there. Okay, full speed forward. It's got flank speed southbound but it's still kind of facing the wrong way. Another prop war now against American forces, able to make that you know M8 retreat because it has no support. Uh, we're now down to 17 munitions, though, for, for, for Dev M, so he can't do this prop war thing again, although he does have 65 coming in. He is just controlling all of the munitions on the map. That's how he's been able to pull off five or six prop wars so far. And compare that to Freestyle's plus 10 muni income, it's got to be said, Infantry Doctrine is a munition-heavy uh, Doctrine choice. Yeah, that's true. That's why we haven't seen any very many off-map combat shoots. I'm uh, sort of disappointed we haven't seen many on-map combat shoots. Okay, here's one. Finally, we're getting one. Well, well played by Freestyle to just drive off those Volts Grenadiers at this point. Uh, he needs to take some territory, uh, and I think that maybe the right-hand side, this bone of contention here on the right-hand side is where he's going to try and do it. And he stopped the shoot after two shots so he could get in and cap the beat. Well, we've got a WTF Stug. What's going on here? Dev M perhaps upset that his Stug is stuck in the water. Didn't go in the right direction. And a sticky right to the tail of that Stug. Ooh, this is going to be a big problem. Here comes this M8. It smells blood. Now damaged engine trying desperately to turn around and face that M18. Front shot bounces off the front of that Stug. And here we go. It looks like there's going to try some desperate circle strafing here. The, the M18 does not have that great of a front gun. Um, so as you can see here, all of the shots so far have been able to get the Stug uh, armor uh, non-penetrating. Oh my gosh, now we're in trouble. This M18 looks like if he can get one more shot, it can take out the Stug, but not before oh. Shrex and Panzerfaust take it out first. Oh, but here comes another M18 destroying that desperately damaged Stug. Good armor exchanges all around by these two men. Boy, it's been brutal. Really, really brutal. I'll tell you one thing though, uh, Devon's going to say thank you for those two carcasses, get the munis in and launch a few more prop wars. Of course, uh, prop war is what he can do to counter these ra rampaging very strong rifles. Look, both of them are at VET 1. He certainly doesn't want to have to face uh, those guys and they're the secret to keeping the American team alive right now. Here we go, long range combat from all directions. There's not enough munitions for a prop war yet. And it looks and like the, uh, we've got American arm right now. Yeah, that, that, that's what they're going to do. They're, they're, they're bringing in that munitions ASAP in order to push these riflemen right off the field with more prop. On map artillery shoots coming down right on those Pumas. Got to get out of there. Okay, looks like that on map artillery shoot is going to be able to just basically fall into nothing at this point right now. Americans holding on to that VP point. That's what's keeping them alive right now. 134 VP points left. 
for Freestyler. He has got to make some more headway into German territory. I'm going to guess maybe in the center next is where he needs to go to take that center VP. No, I think that that's probably a good call. I also think that uh, he's no play that. I was going to say he was saving money for off-map combat group, but he's just spent it on something. And that would be another Hellcat. Okay, looks like he is basically investing all of his munitions and fuel, I'm sorry, manpower and fuel on Hellcats. You know, back in the German base, I'm seeing a lot of static, nothing really uh, upgrading or being purchased there. It looks like DevM is content with the amount of upgrades and units and his unit choice, doctrine choice for this army. This understrength Ooh, stug, though, is now going KT. Head head. KT's up, rifles uh -huh. probably off the center. That's where all of this manpower was being saved for. Here we go. The beast of World War II, the King Tiger, now going head-to-head. -head. M18s have no chance against the frontal armor of this monster. Almost 1,600 hit points and slow as a moose in molasses, but basically unstoppable at this point in the game. No American AT guns anywhere to be found. Heck, I've seen howitzer shots bounce off the front of this thing. Uh, that's how powerful it is. And interesting now, DevM's covering the middle DP uh, with Puma and Grant. Be able to uh, keep that in his control for a bit longer and keep that stranglehold on the VPs up. VPs are his path to victory at this point, and the only thing that's going to take down this KT is circle strafing. There's absolutely nothing in the American arsenal that can penetrate this thing's front armor. So as long as DevM keeps it pointed in the right direction and nothing gets behind it, he's going to do just fine. So infantry cover on this KT is going to make it basically an invincible unit on the right-hand side. He's going to need a little bit more at this point. Here we go. This is where Freestyler makes his push against the KT. Prop war. There go the riflemen. Now the KT is in perfect position to keep engaging these two pieces of American armor. These M18s, I'm not even going to call them heavy armor. It's more like medium armor at this point. And look at how fast that M18 on the left-hand side is going down. It's a 10% health. It's got to keep retreating. German infantry, they smell victory as they push forward in support of that KT. Off the engineers go, off the field. And Volksgrenadiers now holding on to this third victory point. This is all DevM needs to do to knock out Freestyler in this best of three series. Just needs to hold on for about mm, 60 more seconds and he's got this game. I think the repair bunker is a really good choice for DevM. It's really helpful in keeping the stocks operational and letting me stand toe to toe with the Hellcat. And it'll be helpful keeping yeah. the KT in uh, working order. Yes, the KT, uh, you know, retreating now under artillery fire, only because I think he's trying to back up. He doesn't want to engage any sort of American infantry without any infantry support of his own. But yes, that repair bunker, you know, it's great. It saves you on micro. It saves you on, on, on manpower of worrying about where your pioneers are. And we've got just about enough munitions for another prop war. I'll bet you DevM is going to prop war them right now. There it was, exactly as I as expected. And now this is the last desperate push of American armor here as they try and circle straight this KT. I'm surprised at how far it's gotten down. I think at this point maybe DevM doesn't care. He's got 30, you know, all he needs to do is stay alive for a few more seconds and uh, and watch as this M18 desperately tries to circle strafe this KT. It can actually circle around the tank faster than the turret can spin. It doesn't matter, down it goes, and now German forces solidly control of the entire map. I don't think that Freestyler can even push his Ooh. riflemen Ooh. close enough. Off-map combat group with two M18s. This may not be enough as well either. He has got a race sprint like like Olympic style speed sprinting down to that VP if he wants to save it, but he's not gonna do it. It's GG. It is done. Well played by both men. Dev M showing that not only can he sprint, he can last in a marathon. And this was a long game at 30 minutes, much longer than Dev M is probably used to playing. It's a great opponent, you know, Freestyle is a great opponent and he held up, but man, just excellent micro and macro by the Kid Wonder Dev M, and I'm very, very happy I got to shoutcast this game with you. Call me Sarge. Yoink, it's always a pleasure, and like I said, I think tonight is the night for DevM. He's been here before, but everything's going his way, you know. There was, again, no major errors, no major clangers. He read the game. His tech choices were sound. His doctrine choices were, were good and well utilized, whereas Freestyler did not look comfortable at any stage of that match. I agree. I agree. You know, he had different... Uh different choices first I thought he was gonna go with rifles very heavy rifle and then instead he decided to go with tank depot either way it didn't work out for him he's a great player and I'm sure that we'll see him again in company of heroes 2 but for now 
Coming up next, we've got Sefa versus Guderian with a best of three combat when I come back with my co-host Ami Polizei Funk. For now, NTD, roll that video. Axis wins. We'll be back right after this.